Hello students and welcome to this calculus video. In this lesson, we're going to start learning about how to integrate composite functions. In this video, we're going to actually look at it using just finding patterns on how we can integrate. So let's get started. For these series of problems, what we're going to do is we're going to find derivatives. And what you're going to notice is you're going to use the chain rule. And then from there, once you have the derivative, what we're going to do is we're going to find the integral of the derivative, which we already know how to do. So let's look at this first one. Well, the derivative of sine of three X, so F prime of X. Well, what's the derivative of the outside? Well, that's going to get us cosine with the inside times three. So this is going to be three cosine of three X. So that's what we're going to integrate here. So we're going to find the integral of three cosine of three X DX. And since we already know this is the integral of a derivative, well, that's just going to be whatever the original function was. So that's going to say sine of 3x plus c. Don't forget that plus c. And as we're going through this, what I kind of want you to notice is that the derivative of the inside of 3x is on the outside in the integrand. So let's see if that pattern continues. So moving on to our next one, we have e to the cosine of x. So let's find f prime of x here. Well, that's just going to be e to the cosine of x times negative sine x. So we clean this up a little bit. It's going to be negative sine x times e to the cosine of x. So let's integrate this. So we're going to integrate negative sine x e to the cosine of x dx. And since we already know what the original function was, we know that this is going to come out to e to the cosine of x plus C. Again, never forgetting the plus C. What I want us to notice is that, okay, what is the inner part of this function? Well, that is cosine of X. And what's the derivative of cosine of X? Well, that's negative sine X. So just seeing if we can find some patterns. All right, let's go ahead and do these next two. Do them on your own and check your answers in just a second. All right, so that's going to be um, those two derivatives and the integrals as well. So in the first one, um, yeah, we're don't forget like whenever you're going down or going up, taking the integral, that if you end up with the natural log, you do need the absolute value just to ensure that anything inside of the log is going to be positive. But what I do want us to notice is that the inner part, x squared plus three, the derivative of that would be two x, which is found here. And then in the last problem, it's a little bit different. It's not too clear, but the inner part x squared plus three, the derivative of that of two x is not in there, but there is a connection between x and two x um, and then the x squared. So we're going to talk about that in just a second. So hopefully you found some patterns as you were going through here. So first we know that the derivative of a composite function is the derivative of the outside with the inside times the derivative of the inside. So if we're going backwards, if we have that and we want to take the integral, well, we know it's just going to be the function with the inside part, of course, plus C. So what we're going to end up looking for always, always, always is whatever the inner function is, we're going to always look for is that derivative somewhere around? Can I manipulate this equation in some way? So let's see if we can do that now in some problems. So in this first problem here, three cosine of three X, I'm looking for the inner function. Okay, so that's three X and the derivative is here. Okay, great, fantastic. So let's integrate. So since I have that pattern, this is just going to be, okay, what is the integral, the antiderivative of cosine? Well, that would be sine, keep the inside part plus C. And I wanna do another example with you guys. I'm not gonna do any of these immediate next ones, but I'm gonna jump down to this one that says cosine of three X plus two because the inner part of this function, the three X plus two, that derivative three is nowhere around. But here is what I mean by we can manipulate this. All right, so if I take one third and then I have the integral of three cosine of three X plus two DX. Notice if I have that one third times three, I haven't changed anything about this function. Okay, um, I'm really just multiplying this by one, but I'm changing how that one looks. And now because of that, the inner function 3x plus two 
the derivative of that is hanging out. So now I can take this integral. The integral is gonna be, well, we still have the constant multiple of one third, and then the antiderivative of cosine is sine of three x plus two, and then of course, plus c. So knowing that example, I, I'm sure you're able to do any of these other problems. So let's go ahead and give these a crack and check them in just a minute. let's go through these problems that um, I just completed. So these first few, they're kind of straightforward about just, all right, the derivative of the inner functions already hanging in there. So I already kind of highlighted them. X squared plus five, the derivative of that is two X, which is hanging outside um, in the integrand. So then it's just a matter of, okay, adding one to one third, which is four thirds, dividing uh, by that result, which is multiplying by the reciprocal of three fourths, adding C to it and just rewriting it. Um, over here, the derivative, the antiderivative of sine is negative cosine. Again, the derivative of 2x plus 3 is already hanging out in the integrand, so then we just add c. On this fourth one here, don't forget, we have 1 over x squared plus 2x, so then that's going to be the antiderivative of that is going to be a log of that inner function, which is x squared plus 2x. And the derivative of that was already hanging out in the numerator, so we were good to go. Don't forget, anytime you have one over x and you go up to the natural log, you do want to make sure it's non-negative, so absolute value plus c. So we already did this fifth one here, so I'm gonna look at the one on the right. You can see that um, I ran into a bit of a problem. This is what I would write down. This often, you know, I might write down the case, okay, x squared plus two. What is the derivative of that? What is missing? So the derivative of that, I might write down, okay, I need a two x. I don't have a two x, I have a three x, so the x, Great, I've got that, but I do need the two. So I'm gonna hang in a two in there, but I also need to divide it out so that I, again, I'm not really changing up the problem, I'm just multiplying by one. So I divide by the one half here. That three is a constant multiple, so I just move it outside of the integrand and I'm good to go. So now everything matches up and I see that two X, which is the derivative of X squared plus two, and I'm ready to go with this problem. After that is just a matter of anti-differentiation. And so now this one on the bottom left, five e to the three x, again, the exact same process. What am I looking for? Well, I'm looking for a three. That would be the derivative of that. I don't have a three, I have a five. So let me put a three in there. Okay, I'll put a three in there. Take the five out because that is a constant multiple. And that three that I put in there, I need to divide it out at the same time because I want to only multiply by one. So divide out or multiply by one third. Now it is good to go if it's that pattern that I want it to fit. And then finally in the last problem, again, I just make a note of what I want. So I want a four X hanging out. I don't have a four X, I have a three X. So the same thing, I put the four X where I want it. Great, I put it in there now. And so then from here, once I have that four X in there, I have to divide it out. And that three was a constant multiple, so I divide that three. From there, it's just adding one to the exponent of negative one half, so I end up with positive one half, and we're good to go from there. If you find this lesson a little bit convoluted because of all the things that you're searching for, and it's a little bit more, it's a little bit more about your intuition about mathematics here because we're looking for patterns, okay? This is about pattern recognition. In our next video, hopefully it'll make it a little bit more clear because we're going to give you a solid strategy so that you can actually solve those problems like straight from the get-go. Um, and it's a tool that most calculus students use. So stay tuned for the next video. Of course, if you need help with any of the problems in this video, um, if you want me to go over those problems and hear my thinking as I go through it, please just let me know. Just reach out to me. I'm Mr. Hernandez, and this was Mr. Hernandez Teaches. Oh,